12. Any question where that came from? If you're, not, if you're getting the same number, that's great. If you're not getting it, you should let me know and I can try to find your mistake. Yes? You don't even have to do that. That's just sort of like a, like that's the easy ones. You might as well make sure that that's just a double, this column here is just a double check. So here it's easy to double check. You don't even have to fill this out if you don't want to. We don't really use it. <laughs> you're right. There's nothing to worry about. It's N minus one. It's just a way of double checking your middle column. You might as well have a double check, right? Now, 18, what? 22.11. Now, if, remember I told you, for those of you who messed up the first test, that the basic structure of hypothesis testing, which some of you didn't get right and don't seem to understand, is necessary for every chapter in the rest of the term, chapter 11, 12, 13, 14, and namely that every hypothesis testing can be broken up into four steps. The first step is to write out the hypotheses. The second step is to do a calculation. Sometimes the calculation could be like a little formula. Sometimes it can take 20 minutes. In this case, it's a, this whole board is full up with this calculation. But this is the end of step number two. We did the calculation. Step number three is always to make a diagram. Okay, except we learned so far the, the, the Z diagram and the T diagram. What do you think the next diagram is going to be called? It's going to be the F because, well, this is the hint that it's going to be called the F diagram, which, which is not the same as a bell-shaped curve. Why, why is it different than a bell-shaped curve? First of all, can you have a, a, a symmetric, an equal number of negative and positive values? Excuse me. Popular. Okay. So it turns out that the picture for the F is like a, a bump here and then stretching out. It's really, it's really like, it's, it's sort of like the Z squared, is the square to Z. So it's not symmetric. We're calling it F. It starts out at zero. And when you have really high numbers, does that mean reject a zero to accept a zero? Reject, because, because remember, if it's really close to one, that means accept a, if it's much bigger than one, then it's reject a zero. And even though it's hard to imagine getting something less than one, it turns out you can get less than one. Everything else is do not reject a zero. And what is the size of the rejection region? That's the alpha. Do you take the alpha and chop it in half? That's one of the nice things about chapter 11 and chapter 12. There's always going to be a one-tail test. You never have to worry about chopping the alpha in half. You never chop it in half. So the alpha, let's make up a number because we're making 5%, which is very traditional. Brian, is this, is this visible? Make it just okay. And finally, the last thing you're going to have to do before I go to the F table, which we only have a minute to do, what's going on there, is the degree of freedom. Except, which degree of freedom we're going to use? The C minus one, the N minus C, the N minus one, both of them. It turns out we use both of them. The F table involves, is it depends upon how many groups you have, which is the C minus one, the size of the sample, which is the N minus C, a combination. So when you go to the F table, and we're going to do that in the next uh, 30 seconds or so, it turns out that the F table has, across the top of the page, called numerated degree of freedom, the top part of the fraction, and down the side of the page is called denominated degree of freedom. And with the two of them meet, that's going to be where the F number is. Well, yes, so if that's the case, where's the room for the alpha? Well, there is no room for the alpha because each page has its own alpha. So if alpha 0.05 is the entire page is alpha 0.05. If you're alpha 0.01, you've got to turn to a different page. But once, okay, so with that having said that, we want to go to the back of the book, the F diagram, the page that has 0.05 on the top. We want to go across the top of the page two and down the side of the page six. Now, does anybody have, I asked you to bring those tables to class, and if you haven't done it yet, and I'm not going to throw you out too late already, Please bring the F table to class. What? So anybody who's trying to look it up should be seen, because I do remember that from last year, 5.14. If you can't find 5.14, either because you, well, if you, have a, if you don't have a book, I can't help you. But if you have a book and you're trying to find it, I'll be glad to show it to you. Again, what page is the F table on to tell everybody else where it is? Nine nineteen, and again, remember there's a few of them. I'm on, a, on a test, I'm going to Xerox view two or three or four different F tables. You have to pick the one with the 0.05. So we just finished for five points or ten points on the test. How to look up the F boundary? The last question, the last step is to, again the last step of hypothesis testing is to make a conclusion or a decision. Where is 18.12? 18.12. 18.12 18 was much past 5.14. It's way into the rejection region, 
and therefore the only possible conclusion is to reject a zero. That's the answer to the question. And if the book said, for example, is there evidence of a difference among the drugs, what would that be, yes or no? Yes, we just proved that the A0 is false, that there is evidence of a difference and not all the same. So they're not, drugs not the same. Folks, okay.